Hello family and welcome back to Problem Solvers University. Uh, once again, my name is Dr. Carlos N. Moore. I'm the founder of the university. And I um, basically, uh, today we're gonna to talk about personal appearances, part one. That's personal appearances, part one. Um, just a little bit, quick background about myself. And I apologize for the warrants uh, people who have looked at some of my previous videos and I have to always do this introduction because sometimes when people Google uh, subject matters that pertain to their certain situation they may not have um, previewed or reviewed uh, previous vid videos that I've made so um, I apologize to you for having to go through the introduction every time I do a video but that's the main reason why now the reason why I call you family it's because I love Bernie Mac. He used to be one of my favorite comedians. And I noticed that when he called people family, he made me feel like I was actually his family. So uh, with that being said, um, I started this university uh, a while back, back in 1994, basically while I was in the United States Air Force. I served as a deputy, command, uh, deputy director of a um, family support center. So I was always asked questions about uh, people bringing me their problems and I would give them solutions. Now, back then, I really wasn't that close to God. I was giving people secular solutions to their problem, but it did help. So uh, I, wanted, I want a couple of shouts to go out right now to Cherry Blossom Lodge 42, uh, Far East, Yakota, Japan, um, Worshipper Master Presley. Uh, that's the name of a lodge, uh, by the way, for those who don't know. Presley it was very instrumental and um, showing me some things right when I was getting ready to retire. So I just want to shout out to go him. And also Jeffrey Hathaway, that's my longtime buddy back at Scott Air Force Base, uh, Illinois, Belleville, Illinois. And um, Jeff, I want you to know that uh, I keep you and your families in prayer. Uh, we're going to keep building this kingdom for God. Even though we're separated by miles, Jeff is from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm currently um, located in Tampa, Florida. So let's go on with our subject matter. Now, appearances. Uh, Christians having plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery. Uh, what does the Bible have to say about this? Well, there's nothing in the Bible to indicate that plastic surgery is in itself or of itself anything wrong with it however there are several things that one needs to consider before deciding whether or not to undergo these procedures for example is that why are you trying to have this surgery done on such a tender place on your body uh, particularly the face um, uh, in the front of your forehead is the where the uh, frontal cortex that's your of the brain is located. Um, any little slip up can cause your memory to go astray. You know, the big thing about NFL football players right now is the concussions. So unless you have a surgeon that's really skillful, there are several different things that can go wrong with this plastic surgery. And I, I have a couple of slides to kind of indicate and show you that. I think it's on part two, but we'll get into that. So the first thing is the Bible says, does really not have anything to say about it, but um, uh, it's a decision that each person should make, okay? Now, seeking approval, attention. This is my idol. I grew up with Michael Jackson. I was back in this time frame. Michael is about two years older than me or three, something like that. But, you know, I grew up with him when he looked like me. Uh, on the picture on the left, you know, uh, he was he's better looking than I was, but you know his skin tone was like mine. Uh, I, if you look at the picture on the right, I don't really know what he did, but it doesn't seem like the picture on the left. Uh, the eyes, the nose, the skin color. You know, I don't know. It looked like his whole body is like that. So I, I'm not here to judge Michael or anybody else. I just want to show you uh, and have you ask yourself the question: Why would Michael Jackson do this? What was going through his mind? What what did people uh, make him feel like? You know that he had to go to this I call extreme. So 
alter, altering your body is unnatural. I want you to know that now because God created, created you. Um, and so there's always risks associated uh, and side effects with the physical and the psychological part about this type of cosmetic surgery. So no one should allow himself or herself to be put under the knife without first thoroughly researching all alternatives, risks and side effects involved in the surgery. I've heard cases of people getting butt surgeries where they pull concrete or plastic, you know, that you can buy from Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, women, especially, there's a craze now saying who can get the biggest butts. And some of the pictures that I've seen, uh, it's horrendous the way women look. I don't understand why a woman want a big butt anyway. A real man don't really want to see a woman with all that big butt stuff unless it's natural. And we can tell if something's natural or not. So now uh, a person also needs to fully identify his or her motivations for desiring such a surgery like cosmetic surgery. For many uh, with physical deformities now, uh, whether they're genetic or acquired, it is natural to want to fit into society and feel normal. So the question is, what is normal, right? So now there's also cases of slight abnormalities that would cause someone to feel uncomfortable with himself, such as a very large or mishappened nose. So if you look at Michael Jackson, picture on the right, that's actually a plastic surgery done before. His nose used to look like mine. You know, we have those African nose, those uh, nose is kind of sprayed a little bit. But you know what? It helps me breathe better. Okay. So, so uh, for many, if not plastic surgeries, um, they try to do that uh, to fill some type of emotional voids in this physical way. You know what I mean? They want more attention or they're seeking approvals from others. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know a lot of women I talk to and uh, counsel, they, they have told me stories that the husband look at other women because they may be getting older or uh, they're not looking the same, that bottle shape like they used to have. So they get liposuction or they breast, in, uh, breast enhancements or butt enhancements, you know, the, you know, whatever it takes, I've seen people go to such extremes just to get approval from society. Now, vain or conceited. And God tells us not to be vain or conceited. The most commonly performed cosmetic procedures include breast augmentation or lifts, lip liposuction, and you know, for those who don't know what that is, that's when they stick a tube inside of you and melt away fat cells. You know, by the way, fat cells is nothing but energy uh, stacked up on top of each other. So even though you can grab that, that's what it, that's what liquefies when they do liposuctions. People also get face face lifts, eyelid lifts, buttocks, and other body lifts. Leg veins, treatments, Botox, uh, injections, you know, uh, they even put fat inside of their face and nose and all kind of stuff trying to reshape it. Uh, but approximately 2 million people subject themselves to these kinds of procedures each year, you know, shelling out all kind of money. Won't even buy the kids a good brand name pack of cereal because they want to look good for that stud out there on the street somewhere. But um, they sacrifice a lot of time, finances, and energy trying to get attention. And that's that kills me. Now, I'm a man. I may not understand what a woman go through. But as a man, I know men who have got penis enhancements, uh, chest enhancements, butt enhancements, uh, calf muscles, and uh, uh, take fat from their butts and put it in their calves. Um, the big thing with men right now is a concern with their size of their penis. So what they try to do is uh, have this 
massive surgery to try to extend their penis or to make it larger, uh, hoping that that can soothe them emotionally uh, with the women or men, depending on what you what your desire is. But that's why uh, a lot of men are having these surgeries. Now, I must remind you though, when vanities motivates a person to undergo surgery, he or she has become his or, home, his or her own idol. Now, if you look at this screen here, this is a depiction of a narcissist. <clears throat> and this is actually what goes through a narcissist's brain. Narcissism is a mental disorder, by the way. And I, I run into a lot of people who haven't been medically diagnosed with this, but we see people in Washington right now with this mental disorder. I won't call in the names because I want to keep my videos nonpartisan. But I will say, this, this is my first time, almost 57 years on this planet, that I've seen such disruption in the White House. And I think when you look at a couple of those uh, adjectives, headings, nouns, uh, this you probably can identify a couple of people like this too. So, uh, the Bible warns us not to be vain, you know, showing excessively high opinions of our appearance or abilities or worth. Um, you know, basically we used to say, stop being conceited, you know, and that basically what we're saying, stop trying to be so proud of yourself. You're too vain. You know, just read what, uh, Paul wrote in Philippians chapter two, verse three through four. Now, the Bible warns us not to draw attention to ourselves by the way we look. And I know that troubles a lot of people, especially women. But 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 9, uh, you got to understand why Paul was saying this. Um, now, now, another concern would be the cost. What are you giving up? You know, like I said in another video, let's say you live to be 100 years old. And let's say you're 50 right now. That means you're... You're getting ready to approach or enter into the second half of the game. Now, are you trying to enter this game playing the same way you did the first half? You might if the first half was successful. But what if it wasn't? You know, why don't you waste a lot of money on things like plastic surgery? How about your children, grandchildren, uh, your neighbor that may be down and out? Um, so anyway, uh, the major consideration uh, for most people, uh, it's the expense of a plastic surgery. And um, it should never be top priority or the needs of your family. You know, so like I said, I'm not defending it or approving of it. But what I'm saying is that don't take food out of your family mouth or things from your family just so you can look good. Uh, the TV right now is saturated with what your exterior body look like but you never hear about people internal uh parts of their body you have organs that need to maintain but i'm focused dr moore's focus on your soul see because like i say one day we're all going to be horizontal laying in a casket with a lot of people crying and moaning and you know what most people say well i'm just glad they're in a better place right now but I want to stand up in a lot of church services and say, how do you know they're in a better place? Would they ever be brought to trial and accused of being a Christian? And if so, would somebody have proof that they were a Christian? So if you're living a lifestyle right now that's vain, conceited, um, when your day come, your expiration date, when it hits, do you know where you're going? So if you're not saved right now, I invite you to turn your life over to Jesus Christ right now before it's too late. Because once you go to sleep and don't wake up, it is too late. You don't get a second chance, okay? Now, the Bible also tells us that we need to use um, our money wisely. So God has entrusted this to us. Remember, you don't own that money that's in your bank account or your wallet. It's just on loan to you. Just like when you die, your house going to somebody else. You're going to go to your grave with a dress or a shirt, cut out the back, and it's going to ride away. So everything that we collect on this earth, let's keep it in the right perspective. We can't take it to 
uh, heaven and for those who are going to heaven and they're definitely not going to go to hell for those who are going to hell. Um, you never see a U-Haul truck at the graveyard. <laughs> see, because your relatives are back home fighting over all that stuff that you bought. All this plastic surgery. Um, you imagine what's going to happen to all that plastic in your body when you die. Ah, oh, those worms going to have a feast, okay? But anyway, I don't want to get gross. Now, here's what I suggest. Work on the inner you. Look at this picture. Boy, I found this lady, and I find her to be beautiful. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears, fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 31, verse 30. I know a lot of women always, Juanita Bynum came out the Proverbs 31 woman. Boy, that CD flying off shelves. Um, but my take on this beautiful woman here is that she, I can see the compassion in her eyes. Even though her skin is wrinkled right now, I can see that she lived a prosperous life. Because the fact that she's made it to this age. Um, but I want women and men to concentrate on this word beauty. We're not talking about just exterior beauty. We're talking about that inner beauty. All right. So the most important things to do before making this decision to undergo plastic surgery would be to consult God about the issue. You know, say a prayer to. The Bible tells us that God cares about every worry and concern that we have so you know christians we should all take all problems to him you know if you ever turn your bibles to first peter chapter 5 7 you know we're, we're told hey god created everything even that plastic that you're considering uh putting into your body so take it to god and listen to god okay you got to see a lot of people pray to God and ask God for a lot of things, but they fail to listen to the response. Sometimes this is how God talks to you, too, by the way. If you don't know, God talks through other vessels. There could be a stranger that walks up to you and say a word from God. So you have to pay attention to things of God. You have to learn spiritual language. Not just hallelujah and amen. You have to learn that when God speaks, he speaks through his vessels. No longer will God, no longer will God descend on a mountaintop and just speak to you in an audible voice like he did with Moses. God uses his hands and his mouth and his feet on earth. That's what we are. We're the body of Christ as Christians. So therefore we're to carry out God's instructions. <clears throat> so anyway, now, through the wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, we have the ability to make decisions that will please and honor Him. This is what Proverbs 31, 30 says. Charm is deceptive, right? I'm going to say this again to you. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman, woe man, Woe man, that means that she came out the side of a man who feel fears, fears. That means fears of not as though you're scared like on of a monster, but you feared out of respect, admiration. Ah, the Lord is to be praised. Praise. Uh, that, that's a word that we admire. We have so much admiration. We're in awe. It's like seeing something that you can't describe. That's what praise means. Gives you that type of feeling. Okay? So, even the most skilled surgeon cannot hold back the hands of time. Remember that. And all cosmetic surgery will eventually have the same result, which is aging. Those lift body parts will sag one day. And those co cosmetically altered facial features will eventually wrinkle. It is far better to work on the beautifying the person underneath. That of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which of great worth in God's sight. That's what you'll find in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. And 
I'm going to say that's it. It's been a short video this time, but I want to thank you for tuning in. Um, my God given talent tells me one day, if I can get enough donations, I want to start a Problem Solvers University Community Center where I can bring people in and give them tangible things that may help improve their life. But it's for those people who want to commit themselves to Jesus Christ. You see, I'm on Jesus' team. There's two teams. There's Satan teams, there's Jesus' team. You must decide and stop straddling the line and get on one team. You know, you have to learn, the, the, you know, as a football analogy, if I'm playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but my buddy played for the Green Bay Packers, even though we're buddies, I can't look at his playbook and I'm not going to let him look at my playbook. So, as Christians, we want the other team to look at our playbook, but we definitely don't want to play by their playbook. So, we invite them to look at our playbook, which is the Bible, but we definitely don't want to look at the satanic playbook, okay? Because the devil has certain powers, and he op operates through thoughts, ideals, and suggestions. So, we must stay clear of the devil. But if you found this video to be of some use or help to you, Please make a generous donation to Dr. Moore, Dr. Carlos Moore, Post Office Box 871, Sufferland, Florida, 33583-871. And please check out my website at drcmoore.com. It's a website that's still under construction, but you might be able to find something useful in the website. And also, I have a bookstore at lulu.com. So, that's it for right now, family. Until next time. Peace.